Hey ho bike campers, it's me again, down here in uh, Castle Mountain area. This is actually Castle Falls behind me here, and uh, staying at the Castle Falls <coughs> um, campsite tonight. And uh, tomorrow morning going to get up and head down to Castle Mountain and park there, and then start a new loop, a three day adventure that's going to take in Middle Pass, over into the Flathead, uh, on up to Elko and then uh, kind of loops back into the mountains and pops out in the crow's nest at, uh, at stay, stay in Blairmore for the second night and then back to Castle Mountain. Pretty much all for service road. I think some of it's on the uh, Great Divide mountain bike route so that should be pretty cool. Maybe run into some more people on bikes. Um, should be great. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a three day ride, um, about 300 kilometer loop. Um, I brought the uh, the e-bike for this trip again. I wanted to do another e-bike adventure and uh, <clears throat> with uh, basically going to have about 110k day the first day with a recharge and an overnight in Elko and then another 110ish maybe with a recharge and overnight in Blairmore and then back to the car. Uh, weather looks amazing, hoping for not as hot, doesn't look like there's any rain which is great. So the forecast for tonight is to get pretty cold, maybe down to close to zero. So we'll see what happens, but should be fine. Uh, otherwise, look at that beautiful falls there. And there's like a lovely little swimming hole right here. Looks to me like this is polished rocks from bare feet jumping into that water. So it looks pretty nice. Anyway, we'll check in tomorrow when we're ready to pedal away. And uh, We'll have a, I'll post a picture of the um, of the loop actually, and so you can kind of get a sense of where we are on the planet. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Sleep tight. Good morning, campers. Greetings from West Castle area. Just uh, started pedaling away from the Castle Ski Hill parking lot a few minutes ago. Kind of rolling along this two track. It's pretty rocky, but it's okay. And uh, heading towards Middle Pass, which is uh, looks to be perhaps like seven kilometers maybe to the summit, but brutally steep from what I can tell on the old GPS. And then uh, over the top and on our way down to uh, into BC. Then points after that. Um, the ride uh, today, we go up and over the Continental Divide, which is pretty cool. I remember being a kid from the flatlands of Toronto and the first time coming out to Alberta and figuring, like, understanding the concept of the Continental Divide and was just kind of blown away by it. Anyway. Looks like a split in the trails coming up here. We're gonna start heading up. I'm gonna pan around here and show you where we're headed. I think we're headed up there, somewhere. Looking forward to the view from the top, that's for sure. What a brute. Middle Pass was mostly pushing. Thank God for walk assist. Bosch, appreciate it. Basically at the top here, this is the Alberta side. Pretty spectacular, hey? Man, I'm like shaking from pushing up that hill. Looks like we got a little bit more to go and then Dropping into the BC side. We're going over the Continental Divide here, which is pretty cool. <sighs> All right, 
I made it over the top. We're in the saddle here. That's BC behind me, our direction. Looks like some downhilling finally. Woo, there's the war rig. So, definitely barren up here. Amazing. That's Alberta behind me. And we'll check in a little further along the way here. Pretty glad to be done all that. All that pushing. Oh, it's tough. Okay. Let's coast downhill for a while, or at least hope to coast downhill for a while. I guess I better keep an eye open for these guys now that we're into the deepest, darkest parts of BC. Hanging out at your butt wreck area. Got the pot of noodles going. Hashtag pot of nudes. Two hours in. And. We at 30 something K. Pretty slow going to get up and over the pass, but uh, once we hit the other side and kind of hit the Forest Service roads, we're starting to make some pretty good time now. So, yeah, a little break. Noodles are rocking. War rig's killing it. Lots of juice left on there. I think we have about 70k to go, 80k to go, something like that. Yeah. Not a bad spot. Finally reached the summit <clears throat> of the cabin forced service road, which was about 20 kilometers of pretty much non-stop climbing up to this point. <clears throat> Whew, a little bit blasted from that, but uh, what a road though. Essentially kind of what you see here, more or less two track with uh, not, uh, not a single car on it. Further back down in the bottom of the valley, it was actually in the trees. It was really nice. It was just really shady, a bit wet, but really pretty nice. But not a soul. I've been, haven't seen any any vehicles at all today, except for that one uh, logging truck. But there hasn't been anybody out here. I haven't seen a soul. It's been really quite nice. Anyway, hoping for more downhill here. One more shot of that. Hanging out here in the Wigwam River Valley. <clears throat> Pretty interesting to to uh, see this valley. It looks like it was all burnt out kind of back up that way. Um, I don't know when. 
but uh, lots of uh, lots of burned out trees even just right behind me. We're heading that way towards Elko. I think we're probably 25 or 30k away. It's been an awesome day so far. Pretty tough, and uh, but gorgeous. In the home stretch here, so. Whew. Take a look at the beautiful bicycle right there. Hey, look at that thing. Yep. Hey campers, day one in the bag, 112k, a um, little surprise at the end of the uh, day of some kind of rowdy two track that seemed to go nowhere but ended up popping right out at the, uh, in almost in Elko proper, it was really actually kind of nice. Um, it was actually a closed section to cars so it was just this kind of like little adventure spot, it was nice. Long day, a little hotter than I expected. Feeling a bit ragged. I think the same as last time, my neck and stuff is messed up from the weight of that e-bike. Wasn't sure I was gonna be able to even get the thing up and over middle pass this morning. It was so hard to push it up there. Thank God for walk assist, but it uh, even with walk assist, I could barely get that bike up that steep uh, baby head trail pitch. But we made it. And we're here, and we're in uh, beautiful, not really, Elko campground. It's pretty cheap though, 16 bucks. <clears throat> and I can poach some power to fire up the uh, war rig, because when I got here I had 7 kilometers left, so that was a pretty tough day. Anyway, tomorrow we're on for another 100k plus day with um, some pavement so I'm kind of hopeful I don't get close to the end of the gas tank there <clears throat> but uh, tomorrow starts off with looks like 40 kilometers of climbing <laughs> that's a way to wake up uh, nice view over there of uh, kind of the flathead the sun going down just there and uh, yep yeah. onward and upward tired but good night's sleep under this little shelter here. So I'm going to run no fly tonight. So hopefully we stay a little drier. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Say hi to all the Elconians as we ride past. So hi, Elconians! Today we're rolling from Elko, eventually ending up in Blairmore. Hey, and there's a trike on a tree. <clears throat> and uh, via some Forest Service roads that I've never been on before. Um, and well, one segment for a little while it was on last year. And looks like another lovely day. Not really sure what to expect today, whether it's gonna be mostly gravel, some pavement. I know that there's about a 30K section of pavement that we have to manage or deal with, uh, which is actually just the Crow's Nest Highway uh, to finish the day off. But whether there's some um, more pavement in the Corbin mine area, I'm not sure. Otherwise, it was a nice night, bluebird sky, 
about to dip down here to the <clears throat> Elk River. Start following that for a little while and we'll see how she goes. Check in with you later. Fresh tracks. Lodgepole Road, heading back towards Elko. That's Lodgepole Road, direction I'm going. And apparently that's Ram Creek Main Road, wherever that goes. Man, it's beautiful out here. You can see those rock outcroppings way up there. It's pretty beautiful. Whew. Getting close to the top of the main objective of the day. We're way up here. Somewhere on the Continental Divide. Still got to go up and over that gap up in there. Pretty little lake down there. That's Lodgepole Forest Service Road. And uh, it cut off and we actually came up that. Looped around and climbing up that. It's been a beast. But getting close to the top of the big one for the day anyway. <clears throat> and then down a little bit and then it looks like another steep super push as well and we'll see how it goes few uh, logging trucks but otherwise it's been really quiet pretty unrelenting uh, road though I gotta say feeling it pretty good right now I take a little break here and there just a constant grind but wow it's so amazing I mean again look at the mountains over there it's so pretty it's pretty cool hey I'm really curious if that that road over there heads over Save that one for another day. Onward and upward through that gap. All right, so I think this road is closed to cars because I can't imagine a car or a truck even driving on it because it's been basically you see behind me kind of baby heads, blown out bridges, pushing, um, really rough and rocky. I think it might be called the Flathead Valley Road <clears throat> and, and going uh, in the opposite direction of what you're looking at heads up towards Corbin. But uh, yeah, if you come this way, don't bring a gravel bike. <laughs> Definitely would recommend a mountain bike because it's pretty serious. Um, the direction I'm going, it's all pretty much climbing. Uh, I don't know, we probably have another 10K to go. And I hope it's not like this, but it might be. But uh, I just wanted to show how gnarly it is. There's a couple of photos that, uh, that uh, you'll see as well that are maybe don't really do it justice, but wow. Rugged. Quiet highways. Pretty nice. This is the <clears throat> secondary road that goes up to the Corbin mine. 
few vehicles on it, but nothing much. Whew. Almost to the destination for the end of the day. Probably another, I don't know, 30k or something to go to get to Blairmore. Legs are pretty punched. Had some cramps in my left leg. Lower leg, upper leg at the same time. I was able to pedal through those. On, uh, back, way back on that rough, um, baby heady climby part. But kind of gone through it, just keep it on going. Boop, boop, back in Alberta. One more time over the Continental Divide. Hopefully some pizza soon. Good morning, friends. Last day. Up early here this morning because mostly because of the train. And forgot to bring earplugs on this last trip, which was a dumb move. I think every time I've gone out this summer, I've forgotten to bring earplugs. And each time I say, bring earplugs. So, <clears throat> up at first light here because, you know, why not? And uh, forgot to uh, <clears throat> forgot to check in at the end of the day, day there yesterday. It was a this is a good day. Uh, quite a bit of pavement at the end, but you know that's okay too. <clears throat> and uh, checked in at the Lost Lemon Campground, which has got 25 cent showers for two minutes, um, and they're hot, hot, hot. And uh, nice grassy spot to put the tent down and and uh, charge the bike so I think uh, just calculated on uh, how long today's gonna be I think it's actually gonna be pretty short so I'm gonna try to get her done and might even be able to get back to Calgary to put in most of a full day of work which uh, I'm sure my lovely wife would appreciate uh, yeah so I'll take some snaps along the way I guess and New, new road that I've never been on, a new section of town I've never been through, or part of our world, sorry, I've never been through. But uh, it's looking, shaping up to be a nice day. Get some, some good old coffee going here. And uh, hitting the road right away. Peace out. Looks like a little more climbing here. This is the road south out of Blairmore up this beautiful valley. I don't know if you can see the road down below us there. Way down there. Kind of climbed all the way up from the valley below. It's very nice. Heard something big rustling in the bushes back there. Yeah, look at this, eh? So it just went over the top of the little gap, little summit. And I just wanted to show you this beautiful valley that's here is amazing. It's so pretty. I kind of wish I had a maybe a GoPro or something to um, show you the descent because I think it's gonna be fun. But down we go, down that way. Awesome. Thanks. Nice way to finish the day. Done. Back to castle. Beautiful ski hill there, hey? 
amazing place in the winter time when the snow conditions are great. But yeah, done. Another e-bike adventure in the in the bag. I can say uh, that's probably it for the season. It was uh, pretty cool to um, try out the uh, what an e-bike can do from uh, from a touring or bike packing perspective. I think I might have more thoughts on that later, but uh, but suffice to say, it's a pretty interesting way to go. Um, and uh, has its advantages and disadvantages but good times and this particular route was amazing i think i'd like to come back and just do it on a regular bike though i i know a friend of mine laura did it on a on a heart or on a, a gravel bike and i think she's a beast for doing that because there was a lot of pretty rough terrain so i think if it was me i'd come back with a hardtail but the loop itself was amazing uh really remote it just felt like there, there's no one around for for most of it um, and some spectacular views and crazy climbs kind of felt like it was in Europe or maybe what I imagine some riding some European roads might be like if they were if they weren't paved um, but yeah back to work and uh, we'll check in next time